Hey everyone, welcome back. Believe it or not, I'm getting very close to finishing up all the upgrades to my mini lathe. One thing that is very overdue for an upgrade though, is the tailstock locking mechanism. It doesn't apply to all mini lathes, but most Sieg models come with a nut that you tighten with a wrench to lock the tailstock in place. Now this design is not exclusive to mini lathes, I've encountered it on some much larger lathes, but on mini lathes, there are many occasions where accessing the locking nut can be very difficult, and if you're doing a job where you need to move the tailstock around a lot, you'll find that the time spent locking and unlocking the tailstock can really add up. So my plan is to upgrade the tailstock to have a quick locking lever, and to do this, I'll need to disassemble the tailstock. At the same time, I might as well replace the locking plate. A lot of the threads stripped out a very long time ago and the stud is bent at an angle. I've drawn up a quick model in CAD. My aim is to fill in the cutout recess where the nut would be located. Now optimally, I'd use steel for this, but I had a lot of aluminium on hand, so I think it would do the job just fine. My aim is to machine the aluminium so it can easily slot into the void. Before I can do that, I need to quickly modify the tailstock. Because the part is cast, there are going to be these 3 degree draft angles on each of the sides. Now I could produce an insert with 3 tapered sides, but I think it's a lot easier to build down the tapers so they're flat. Now because the part I'm machining is pretty deep, Ultimately, I'd use a reduced shank end mill to prevent the shank from rubbing on the cast iron. Instead of going out and buying an expensive cutter, I opted to modify this one on the lathe. The carbide easily turns the high speed steel shank, and I was very happy to sacrifice this tool because it was nearing the end of its service life. The part turned out pretty decent. Now there's going to be a fair amount of deflection with this tool, so I'll take it very slowly and take some very light passes. It's not perfect, but it does the job fine enough, and it saves me shilling out for an expensive tool that I'd probably rarely use. It's not a perfect 90 degree angle, but it's good enough and I'll take what I can get. I'll now take the aluminium and rough it down to the correct size. I'll use the fly cutter because it does a really good job of removing a bulk of the material pretty quickly. Two of the corners need a 6mm fillet, so I will use a rounded corner router bit to form the basic profile and I will finish it off by hand. The final thing I need to do is machine a slot in the back corner. The part needed a bit of filing on one side, but the final fit was really decent. 
there's about 12 millimeters of excess stick out, so I'll cut most of it away using the hacksaw. The piece is big enough to be used in future projects, so there's no need to turn it into chips. Before we can face it, I'll quickly drill two holes for screws that will hold the insert in place. I was recently given an M6 counterbore tool, and this was the perfect opportunity to test it out. And it cuts really nicely into the cast iron, and it leaves a really great finish. The aluminium is then removed and tapped for M6. With the insert bolted in, I'll use the fly cutter to remove the excess aluminium. Now due to a slight quirk with the tailstock, it was manufactured slightly warped at the top, so I'll quickly correct it whilst facing it. I'll be repainting the tailstock, so messing it up here isn't going to be a huge problem. I marked out where the centre of the locking hole was and I drilled it out. We have to do this with the aluminium removed from the tailstock because the hole that we're going to make is going to be a lot bigger than the 12mm one already drilled in the tailstock. The hole I'm going to make is going to be 5 8 inch in diameter. I'm going to be using a deming bit but you could always resort to using a boring head or mounting it in the forward jaw lathe and boring it. I'll then screw it into the back of the tailstock and locate the centre of the raised arch on the back. I'll then spot it and drill it through with an 11mm drill. If everything works out correctly, the two holes will perfectly intersect. Now at this point we can start to make up the internal components. However, to do this, I did have to reassemble the tailstock since I needed it to produce the components. The first piece I need to make is very simple. It's a cylindrical insert that will fit in the hole that we drilled in the aluminium. I'll be making it from a piece of mild steel that was left over from a previous project. The hole that we drilled was 5 8 inch in diameter, and since I want a very loose fit, I'll be making this piece 0.2mm under. And a quick test shows a really decent fit. A chamfer at the end prevents it from digging into the walls of the aluminium and the bottom was then drilled to accept an M8 thread. The part was then taken to the mill and an 11mm hole was drilled through it. And that's the first part complete. Next we need to make an eccentric shaft. Originally I was going to make it from a leftover M16 bolt. However, as I machined it, the mystery grade of steel turned out to be of really poor quality. It was very gummy and I just couldn't get a good finish from it. So I remade the part using a piece of carbon steel and I got a really great surface finish from it. I used a thin 1mm parting blade to cut a groove for a circlip. To make the eccentric portion of the rod, I switched over to the independent 4 jaw chuck and I dialed in 2 mils of offset. There's a little more stick out than I'd like and I can't remachine the center, but the deflection was pretty minimal and the part turned out really great. To mount the handle to the eccentric shaft, I'll use a piece of cast iron. I originally sourced the cast iron from a scrap 1 kilo dumbbell and I originally machined it for use as a flywheel. 
I've been asked a few times about sourcing cast iron from dumbbells because it's pretty easy to source for hobby machinists. Having cut a few and a half, I'm not hugely impressed with the quality of the castings. They seem to be pretty porous, so I stick to using them for light duty work. I previously drilled a hole for a set screw, so all I had to do here was drill a hole and tap it for the handle. I'm going to make the lever from a simple piece of half inch mould steel. It's not perfectly round, so I'll take a few light cuts to drew it up. I'll then use the die to cut an M8 thread onto the end. Finally, I'll replace the mounting plate. I'll be making the bottom plate from this cutoff of 3.5mm angled steel. I've seen people make more substantial mounting plates, but I'm not convinced that we'd see any huge improvements. An offset hole was drilled and tapped for M8. I'm planning on welding the stud in place in the future, but allowing it to screw in and out at the moment allows me to adjust the setup for height. The final thing left to do is remove the old paint. This stuff is notorious for easily chipping, so a respray is in order. I can't be too sure what's in this paint, so a full respirator is a pretty good idea. Now I haven't settled on the final colour just yet, but for the moment I'm going to stick with machine grey. While the paint dries, I'm also going to fix another issue that I've known about for quite some time. The base is very poorly machined, and only a small portion of the base touches the waves. Now obviously this is not proper scraping, but scratching away the high spots with a carbon steel scalpel got some pretty decent results quite quickly. Now I didn't do this for very long, but by the time I finished, the area touching the wags was a lot more than before, and I could certainly feel an improvement on the slide. Off camera, I went back and put the tail stock back together, and I realigned it with the centre of the spindle. I forgot to record it, but the first insert that we made is already inside the tail stock, and I added some grease in the hole for some lubrication. The eccentric rod that we made is inserted through the hole. The shoulder should push up against the tail stock, and enough of the rod should push through to allow us to snap on the circlip. The cast iron puck is then screwed onto the rod, followed by the lever. The locking plate is then screwed in. Now there were quite a few adjustments that I had to make, but eventually when you pull on the lever, the locking plate is pulled up and the tailstock is locked in place. Having used it for a bit, I can say this is definitely a worthwhile upgrade. The tailstock locks just as securely as before, and the time that it takes to lock and unlock it is greatly reduced. I'm actually a little bit embarrassed that it's taken me so long to do this. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, I hope you learned something, and with that, Thank you very much for watching.